Hola, friends of Cocktails! Today's cocktail journey takes us to Cuba once again. We're looking at the history of El Presidente. It's a wonderful combination of rum, vermouth, curacao and grenadine, proving you can enjoy a sipping spirit-forward cocktail in the Caribbean way too. We look at three very different recipes, starting in 1915 with bitters added, moving to 1927 with equal parts rum and vermouth, finishing with my experimental take on a modern version of this cocktail. El Presidente embodies the spirit of Cuban mixology and its influence on the international cocktail scene in the 20th century. So let's see how it started and how far it's come. After the final cocktail, I'll have a fun story for you, so let me know if you made it that far. Now it's cocktail history time. El Presidente is an aristocrat of cocktails, writes Basil Wood in his wonderful titled 1928 book when it's cocktail time in Cuba. With a combination of rum and vermouth, it's often called Cuba's answer to the Martinez and the Manhattan cocktails. Many claim El Presidente was created by Eddie Wolke, an American bartender at the Jockey Club in Havana, Cuba, in honor of the Presidente Gerardo Machado. But Wolke came to Cuba in the 1920s during the Prohibition and Machado became the president in 1925 so that's obviously not true. Another famous bartender credited with the recipe was Constantino Ribaligua, the cocktail master from El Florida, then named La Florida. It was famous for his decorates, but according to Jack Cody, who wrote about Constantino in 1937, claimed that his repertoire included the three of Cuba's most popular cocktails, Decorin No. 4, the Presidente, and the Pepin Rivero, all his own inventions. But the first recipe of El Presidente was printed during the presidency of Mario Garcia Menucal, the Cuban president between 1913 and 1921. John Escalante, a Spaniard who previously worked in New York, published Del Manual del Cantenero, or the Bartender's Manual, in 1915 in Havana. Sadly, the page with the Presidente cocktail is scanned in a way that hides some of the recipe, but with a little detective and deductive work, you can see the ingredients and the preparation of the first cocktail of the day. You will need rum, vermouth, grenadine, curacao, angostura bitters, orange, and a cocktail cherry. Interestingly, bitters were still added to Escalante's 1915 recipe, linking the Presidente even closer to the Martinez and Manhattan cocktails. And while the different ratios of rum and vermouth are often discussed, this one will be vermouth heavy. David Quandridge discovered that using the right style of vermouth is what is important. El Presidente is one of the few classic cocktails that uses the harder to find blanc vermouth, sitting between dry and sweet styles of vermouth. Vermouth de Chambéry is listed in the original recipe. Alongside Curacao, I'm using Pierre Ferrand dry orange Curacao. The recipe also gives the option of using grenadine or white syrup, whatever that meant, in 1915. For grenadine, I'm using Kleiber Co's real grenadine, made with cold processing ripe pomegranates, pure cane sugar and orange balsam water. It not only tastes great, but it will give our cocktail a beautiful pinkish hue. Pinkish hue? Yes, a, a, a rosy glow. Orange peel will be added into the mixing glass and we'll garnish the cocktail with a cherry. Fill a retro cup glass with ice and let's make the Presidente cocktail from 1915. As per the recipe, I'm adding cracked ice into a large bar glass before adding the ingredients. I'm starting with two parts of blanc vermouth. Vermouth de Chambéry is historically from the southeastern French town of Chambéry and it really makes a difference. Follow that with one part of rum. While the recipe and the location of Bacardi rum has changed, they were the original Cuban rum and listed in most cocktail recipes of the day. Next, for a touch of tart sweetness and a little color, half a teaspoon of grenadine. Some claim only grenadine was added to the first version of El Presidente and the orange liqueur was added later for President Machado's El Presidente, but the Escalante's 1915 recipe clearly calls for both grenadine and few drops of curacao. As mentioned, this recipe also adds a dash of Angostura bitters. Interestingly, Jim Mian's Bartender Manual from 1917, an amazing cocktail book by the way, lists El Presidente with a dash of Angostura bitters as well. Before we stir, I'll follow the original recipe and add a piece of orange zest for what's known as the Regal Stir. This will add orange essential oils into the drink for a nice, sweet citrus addition. Once it's chilled and diluted, remove the ice from our cooked glass and strain the cocktail in. Garnish serve with the cocktail cherry. Let's see what the pre-prohibition El Presidente tasted like. Cheers! Plenty of vermouth and orange on the aroma. It has a sweet flavor profile, a little too much so for my taste. The rum gets lost, but that could be partly fixed by using a different style of light rum. But as a pleasant, sweet sipper, it was popular among the Cubans for a reason. 
We know this because in 1919, the New York Evening Telegram reported that the Presidente was the favorite drink of the Cubans. There it was described as a mixture of Bacardi, Grenadine, and French Vermouth. For the next variation, we're moving on to the presidency of Gerardo Machado, who was president from 1925 until he was forced to flee Cuba in 1933. In 1927, the cocktail book El Arte de Hacer un Cocktail, or The Art of Making a Cocktail, was published with the author being lost in time. On page 59, you find the recipe for the Presidente and Presidente Machado, with Curaçao being added to the latter. Fewer ingredients, but still all the main players. Rum, Vermouth Blanc, Grenadine and Curaçao, with orange just for the garnish. Since the rum in the recipe isn't specified, I'm taking the liberty of using Havana Club for a year, even though it wasn't created until 1934. Vermouth, Grenadine and Curaçao stayed the same. No bitters or a cocktail cherry for this one. This combination of ingredients is most common for the Presidente to this day. All you have to do is find the right balance for your palate. Again, I'm starting by chilling the glass, but this time I'll also chill the mixing glass before adding the ingredients, as I would for a modern cocktail. Then we follow the recipe, which has a split base of half rum and half French vermouth, so equal parts of two main ingredients. I'm adding one ounce or 30 ml of each. Next, the recipe calls for a few drops of both Curaçao and Grenadine. I'll be adding half a bar spoon of each. If you can't get your hands on Vibrant Co's Grenadine, there are some good recipes for DIY Grenadine on YouTube. With everything in the mixing glass, just add ice, stir well to chill and dilute, then discard the ice from the glass and strain the cocktail into a chilled cocktail glass. For garnish, express an orange peel, then place it in the glass. May the second Presidente cocktail be better than the second presidency of President Machado. Salute! Plenty of sweet orange on the nose, still slightly on the sweeter side, but the balance is much better than the original. Luckily, the rum is allowed to shine and the combination of it all brings nice fruit notes to the front. If you want to make something delicious and easy, make this. For the futuristic version, I took inspiration from a variation of the Tequila Sunrise, which we posted a few months ago. That's where I swapped Grenadine for pomegranate pearls, and I'll do the same here. For ingredients, I'm not limiting myself strictly to the four pillars of the Presidente, but I'm of course keeping the base of rum and vermouth. Here using Plantation 3 stars, and a combination of dry vermouth and Lille Rose aperitif wine to replace blanc vermouth. Curaçao stays the same and grenadine will be added as pearls, but I'm also adding maraschino cherry syrup and saline solution to balance and brighten the flavors. Orange peel will be just for the essential oils. Before I make the cocktail, I'll just quickly breeze through how I made the pearls with direct purification. First, juice the pomegranates. Potato ricer can be used for more than just ricing potatoes. Strain and weigh the juice. For every 100 grams of pomegranate juice, you will then add 0.3 grams of rose water, 0.6 ounce or 20 ml of creme de cassis, and 0.1 ounce or 3 ml of agave syrup. Mix and weigh the total weight of our flavorful liquid. Based on that, you will add 0.8% of that weight of sodium citrate to bring the pH above 4. Once dissolved, add sodium alginate, 0.5% of the total weight of the liquid. Blend and leave to sit for at least 1 hour. For that mixture to turn into pearls, you need a calcium bath. Add 10 grams of calcium chloride to 1 liter of distilled water and whisk until dissolved. Then start adding droplets of our pomegranate with a pepe or a rapid caviar maker. Leave the pearls in a calcium bath for 30 seconds. Transfer them into a pure water bath, scoop them out and that's it. It's a fun way to present a cocktail to your guests and you can use it in any cocktail that calls for grenadine. But test it out and adjust the recipe accordingly. Now let's make a cocktail time version of El Presidente. This time I'm starting with chilling the mixing glass and the Nicanora glass are used is already chilling in the freezer. Start with 1.5 ounce or 45 ml of Plantation 3 stars. Hopefully the Cubans don't mind me using this delicious blend of rums from Barbados, Jamaica and Trinidad. Follow that with 1 ounce or 30 ml of Lille Rose. This wine aperitif will add a touch of that pinkish color. And since we get a hint of sweetness from Lille Rose, I'm using half an ounce or 15 ml of dry vermouth for this one. Together they will add the floral, herbal and fruity notes to complement the rum. As mentioned, dry curacao stays the same. This time I'm using quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml. Syrup from Maraschino cherries will add the color, but also the sweet and sour cherry notes, replacing what would be missing from grenadine and cherry garnish. And lastly, two drops of saline solution. Salt will boost the flavors, just like it would in cooking. Add plenty of ice and stir to chill and dilute. Time or revolutions for what is the right amount of stirring really depend on your ice and technique. So this just takes some practice to dial down. Luckily, practice means making many cocktails, so that's fun. Strain into a chilled Nicanora glass. 
For garnish, scoop grenadine pearls from a teaspoon and place it on the glass. Express essential oils from an orange peel over the glass. Discard the peel and that's it. This has roots in El Presidente, but hopefully it shows you ways to play around with ingredients of your favorite cocktails. Let's mix in the pearls and give this cocktail a taste. The aroma is fruity and citrusy. Rum and lily rose are harmonized beautifully, while the vermouth adds just the right amount of dryness to balance the cocktail. Pomegranate pearls are a delightful addition for both the ice and the palate. The finish is long and full, with lingering notes of rum and flowers. This is the president that gets my vote. With that, you've made it to the bottom of the glass. If you've made it this far, let me know by posting a martini glass emoji in the comments. This week, I have a little historic fun fact about two El Presidentes and the El Presidente cocktail. President Machado hosted a diplomatic dinner in Havana, Cuba in 1928, attended by the US President Kalin Coolidge. With prohibition in full swing back in the US, Coolidge faced a delicate problem of social etiquette under the watchful eye of the American press. They even printed the recipe during prohibition. That's some heartless reporting. So, to drink or not to drink? Interestingly, Coolidge campaigned against prohibition when he ran for governor of Massachusetts. But according to the reporters, Coolidge respectfully declined all cocktails and wines at a dinner. But the press didn't actually witness the dinner, so who knows? His loss if he didn't try this wonderful cocktail. For more history on Cuban cocktails, check out my episodes of The Daiquiri and The Mojito. I'll see you next week. Cheers.